G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are continuing this new series I've got where I'm taking a look at each individual club in the league and I am projecting what their team might look like three years from now. Now I've done the Western Bulldogs, I've done West Coast, I've done the Sydney Swans and today we're doing the Secure Football Club. Now you may or may not be aware I have already done a video series where I'm looking at teams, you know, in the here and now, profiling their best 22, their immediate depth and forecasting how 2024 might go. So there is a St. Kilda version of that out there as well. Uh, today is specifically looking at three years from the future. And the point of the exercise is not to be a prediction as such, but more so analyzing you know, the state of their depth when you consider there's going to be a number of retirements for every club over the next three years and plotting you know, the, how developed some of the young talent in some cases may also be in three years. So it's a, it's a helpful exercise in my opinion and it's reliance heavily on my own you know, thoughts on individual players, which I am not as familiar as the fans, but I'm an outsider having a crack and today, like I said, it's St Kilda's turn. Before I get into it, if you could do me a big favor and consider subscribing to the channel. We are striving to hit 25K by the end of the year. And uh, as you would know, I'm working very hard to get a lot of AFL and cricket content out at the moment. So if that's your forte, this would be a great channel to subscribe to and I would really appreciate it. So the format of the video will be the first part of the analysis is going through their playing list, which I've done in advance, thankfully, and picking out which players are likely to have retired or be gone three years from now, um, or generally retirement. So uh, the cutoff for this, I kind of use their ages by round one of 2027, and therefore uh, every age that I refer to will be that time. So if they're born in... Uh, February, their age will actually be older, obviously. So doing this for St Kilda, it occurred to me this this list is a, a little bit older than perhaps I'd really realised, and, and it will be a very mature list in three years' time. But let's start with the players who I don't think will be there, and I could be wrong. This is speculation, naturally. This whole thing is speculation. But uh, some players, Todd, uh, Tom Campbell, 35, he will be. Um, big surprise, I don't think he'll be on the list. Seb Ross at 33, Jimmy Webster at 33, Brad Hill, Mason Wood and Brad Crouch. They're actually all born, uh, I think, in 93 or close to. Uh, all of those players at 33, I think, are more likely to be gone than not. Again, there's a lot of factors that go into this, you know, positional depth, how well they're playing, their contract statuses as well. Uh, that being said, those were the players that I decided for the purposes of this to leave out. Now, a couple of borderline ones that I've decided to keep in. Those were Tim Membry at 32 and Dougal Howard at 31. I did um and ah about that a little bit, but especially in the case of Dougal Howard, at the moment, I don't think there's a ready-made replacement for him in the best 22. Um, obviously, that can change. They do have their key back tools, but I thought considering their need for Dougal Howard, that the, it's more likely he's still going to be playing at 31. Uh, but then, the, so those are the players I've kept in this, and there's also a number of players which I'll, I'll clarify straight off the bat, I am leaving in this, uh, in this squad. Jack Sinclair at 32, considering how good he is, I think he can still be a good player at 32. Maybe that's his last year. He probably turns 33 that year. Same with Jack Steele, Rowan Marshall, Jack Hayes at 31, considering he was drafted a little bit later. You can extrapolate that to assume he might play a little bit later into his career. Cal Wilkie again at 31. Dan Butler at 30 and Zane Cordy at 30. So that is a, that is seven 30-plus-year-olds that, that St. Kilda will have on the list. In fact, it's nine if you include Membry and Howard. Uh, so it becomes a very mature list in three years. And it's interesting to see when I map out the best 22, the intersection of the young talent that I think they've drafted really well in, in uh, recent years and some high-quality veterans, which will I'll show you the best 23 now. And I, show, I say best 22 and 23, but I really mean best 24 because I've uh, actually included a six-man bench just to flesh out the analysis a little bit deeper. So this is the best 22. Now let me explain it. Uh, now, like I said in a previous video, I'm going to explain this graph to everyone, uh, assuming that everyone who's watching the video is watching this video as the first part of the series. I know there's some of you who watch or may have watched other ones or all of them or whatever, but I'm going to explain what these colors and numbers mean. So the colors for a start, if they're green, I'm really confident about them being best 22 in three years. If they're yellow, then I'm less confident. That's about as deep as it goes. I wouldn't get too hung up on the colors. Obviously, that's based on my opinion, but regardless, I've got them in the 22 slash 24. Uh, but that's what those numbers indicate, or those colors. As for the numbers, the first number is their age by round one of 2027. Uh, or generally just if they're born in March, they're, then I'm, they're a year older, if that makes sense. Um, and then the number behind it is my estimated games experience by then. So like I've said in other videos, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to anyway. I've had to fire in the dark, obviously, with that one. So my general thought is, 
If they're a best 22 player now and they're likely to be over the next three years, I've added 60 games, so 20 games a year, allowing for injury and suspension. It could be more or less. Um, if they're more of a prospect as well who hasn't debuted yet, it's a little bit harder, but I've had a punt. So for instance, Ollie Holton there, 35 games in three years, maybe. Uh, but again, it's a bit of a punt. So again, I wouldn't get too caught up on that. But the point of the numbers is to demonstrate how mature this list will be in three years. Or, you know, and some of this is best case scenario. In some cases, it's conservative. They'll be they'll have more games by then. So without faffing around anymore, let's crack into the actual 22. So looking at the back six, uh, you've got, uh, you know, Josh Battle, I'm, I'm pretty confident will still be in that team. Uh, Naziah Winget, Wanganin Miller will have probably played 100 games by then. Touch wood, obviously, uh, with a healthy run of injury, but he'll be best 22 player over those three years. And in three years with 100 games of experience, you know, he'll, he'll certainly be a better player, you'd think. Jack Sinclair and Wilkie as the veterans down there. Again, Dougal Howard, I've got in this team conservatively because, I, like I said, there are key backs on the list uh, like James Van Ness or something like that <clears throat> who could overtake Dougal Howard. But at 31, he's still going to be available, so I've chucked him in there. Liam Stocker, I just I don't really have a strong opinion either way, uh, but he was probably the strongest prospect there. Um, but I will elaborate on which players I left out later. The midfield, the midfield's an interesting one. So this is part of the factor of why I had Brad Crouch at 33 and Seb Ross at 33 out. Because I do think there's there's depth from underneath coming up. And I have moved Philippou and Owens into the on-ball division. Because I see their best version of their evolution, seeing them as top-level midfielders, potentially. Or good midfielders, anyway. Uh, rather than just forwards. Obviously, they can rotate. And the good thing about their forward line as well, Securities, is there's a few that can rotate through the middle as much as there are mids who can rotate forward. So I've still got Steele, Owens, and Philippou, Darcy Wilson, and Henry as the wings. So the good thing about that is it's a lot less one-paced three years from now than the 22 that I put up in my previous video. Uh, because, you know, Steele and uh, it, maybe he's not the quickest outside type, but when you've got Wilson and Henry on the wings, Philippou and Owens in the guts... I think that's a pretty dynamic midfield. Is it top level? It relies a lot on how, to what extent Machido, Owens, and Philippou develop into uh, quality midfielders. And then also Darcy Wilson hasn't played a game of AFL football. So there's a little bit of speculation there. But from a talent point of view, they have filtered in some mids nicely there. So I think that, that midfield shapes up nicely. Let's talk about the forward line. Membry at 32, is he going to be best, av uh, best available in this team? Potentially. Potentially, he's a good player. 220 games of experience. Key forwards in particular tend to last a little bit longer. Uh, Lance Collard, I put in green. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe he could be yellow because at the end of the day, he was pick 28. Hasn't played a game yet. <clears throat> a little bit of personal opinion there. Uh, but I've chucked him in anyway. Give him about 35 games of experience. Ollie Hotton was another player that I think has some upside as a forward midfielder. I think he'll probably play primarily forward. Um, but he was also probably the next best available talent that's likely to be there. And I did shove... Dan Butler on the bench, but it doesn't really matter if he's on the bench. He's still on the team. Uh, Max King, obviously, by uh, 26 and 130 games of experience, you'd be thinking Coleman medal chance. So that is another strength of this team. And Jack Higgins at 28, you know, he's, he's still a good player. So Windhager is unlucky to make the bench, but I did sort of shove in Philippou and Owens into that midfield. Uh, it's a bit of a young midfield when you really think about it, actually. Um, with Jack Steele, the only veteran there, but the talent is strong. Hunter Clark could be still in the best 24 by then at 28. Dan Butler probably more likely than not. Angus Hasty is speculative. Paddy Dow, I don't have a strong opinion on. It's sort of like Stocker. It's like they kind of didn't go amazingly well at Carlton. But St Kilda feel bullish about their prospects of contributing um, in this team. But, he, you know, he, Dow's an outside chance because I don't I don't really fully believe yet that he is going to become a, a, a good AFL player. So uh, just to cover off some of the players that I've left out that are probably still going to be on the list or, you know, won't have retired anyway. Uh, Zane Cordy, he, he'll probably still be there from an age point of view. There's Ari Schonmaker. Again, three years from now, 21, is he likely to have forced his way in yet um you know is he talented enough is another question i don't know but i don't have him in front of dougal howard yet but you know i'm sure when a st kilda uh optimistic st kilda fan is plotting their team three years from now they're probably thinking sean makers there james van s as well and i think matthew allison's another key defender they've got they also um do have riley bonner on the list again could he be there instead of liam stocker give him a bit more pace out of the back line it's not a bad option but We'll see. Uh, ben Payton was another one that's still going to be around. As for midfield depth, I think the only midfielders that I could see were Zach Jones, who may or may not still be on the list. Um, you know, probably, but 
maybe not. And Hugo Garcia, who I don't know anything about. Isaac Keeler is another reserve ruck for him. As for forwards, you know, I did put Jack Hayes in the team. Anthony Caminiti is another player that could be there. Um, I don't feel strongly either way, uh, but either way, they've got a little bit of depth there. Ryan Burns and a player called Max Heath, who I think is a forward ruck. Okay, so uh, what does this tell us? Well, I mean, it, there's going to be a fairly different 22, and it's also going to be a mature 22, and it's a weird divergence in age because... Um, there's a lot of gun players that are young and I think they've drafted well recently and there's going to be a lot of good veterans. So probably recruiting some mid-age players in between now and three years uh, would probably serve them well. I'm comfortable with this team from a top-end talent point of view, uh, but again, it's still speculative. Like I think Philippou has the tools to be a top-line midfielder, uh, but will he is another question. Same with Machido Owens. Gun players in the current role that he is, but him turning into a top-line midfielder is another question. So I think maybe still drafting for the midfield is one thing they should probably do. I think they've got some good small types. Collard, Wilson, they still they can rotate between a wing and a forward. So overall, you know, it should still be a competitive team in three years as they see the fruits of their good drafting, in my opinion, over the last three or four years or so. Probably a couple of key positional gaps to fill. You know, is Membry absolutely their best option three years from now? Is Dougal Howard? Those are the gaps they need to either fill by unearthing someone that's already on their list or drafting for it. Um, and they could go either way. Maybe drafting a high, like a first round key back would be nice. Key forward as well. Someone to complement memory. And I didn't even mention Shaman there, who, you know, as far as we know, finished the year well for him, but speculative still. So there you go, guys. That is my attempt at plotting their best 22 and my comments on their strengths and weaknesses. As always, I am open and very open to your comments in the comments section below to help me understand the list a little bit better. If there's anything I, um, you know, have got wrong, or at least in your opinion, uh, let me know because it does help me become better at what I do. So I hope you're enjoying the series. I will be moving on to, I think Richmond will be the next club soon. So look out for that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.